For centuries and longer, rats have fought tirelessly to repel the incessant frog invasions. Peace was only ever short-lived. Until finally, a young monarch rose to power. King Rattus, first of his name, unified the rat kingdoms under one rule, repelling Greenwort and his kind back to the putrid swamps from whence they came. Crops prospered, families flourished, and the magnificent Crimson Keep climbed ever higher toward the sky. But as time passed, King Redis the Savior grew old, and the kingdom vulnerable once more. His people grew anxious, some claiming to perceive a faint odor in the air. Greenwort had returned, with a ferocious vengeance. Amassing an army of unfathomable scale, he burned everything in his path towards the Crimson Keep. King Rattus gazed down upon his withered claws, barely able to hold the crown. He had little hope of wielding a sword. So it was decided, the crown should pass to Whiskers new. Arise, young prince, for the kingdom needs a hero. And so, your tale begins. When his squire woke him with this god-awful noise, the young prince was dreaming about this day, just like he had for months. Now it was here, he better be ready.
If he'd known how unlike a dream today would be, he might have stayed in his bed. had ever wanted was to prove worthy of his father's crown. He might be the smallest brother, but if he was prepared, he thought he had some small chance. Reggie's brother, the chef, offered a fine menu, but after Dennis had eaten, there was no food left. Chef would need new supplies from the cellar if Reggie wanted a decent breakfast. The bard had found the last of the summer raspberries in the bare basement. The bard was quick to offer one, even though they weren't his.
He had the ingredients. His brother, the chef, would make you a feast fit for kings. Or so he says. Reggie only ever gets his brother Dennis's leftovers, so he wouldn't know. His brother, the smith, could forge armor and weapons to see off any enemy. He'd make some for Reggie, if the young prince could find blueprints for a rat of his stature. His eldest brother didn't think Reggie could hit a target, even if it was standing still. But Reggie had been training hard. Freshly squeezed bug juice, drink of champions. Nothing better after a long fight. The training dummy's red attacks were too strong to block. It was fast, but Reggie could be faster. Not even Reggie could dodge the dummy's yellow attacks. His only hope was to parry with his trusty shield. The dummy's final attack shook the ground. Reggie would need to dodge to remain unscathed.
Dennis was impressed. If Reggie could just grow another couple inches, he might even have been worried. Reggie'd never seen the Crimson Fort so full of rat folk. The whole kingdom was there. Some even cheered for him. But the king had let his eldest brother lead the procession. If he was scared, he wasn't showing it. He was going to show all of them what he was made of. If nothing else, this would be no easy win for Dennis.
He'd done it. He proved himself a worthy heir to his father's kingdom. The prince woke this time from a dream of blood and frog spawn, finding he had neither a crown, nor a kingdom, nor a father. He needed a place to recover, somewhere to make a plan. Thank <laughs> you. 
Not content with killing the king, the Frog Horde had torn down his throne room, leaving behind little more than smoldering rubble and the bodies of his kin, dead and defiled. He had never seen such evil, nor felt such rage. Reggie had his crown at last, but not his kingdom. Dennis had returned, but shamefaced. Drunk from drowning his sorrows in the village, he couldn't hold back the frogs there or stop them taking their brother, the chef. Reggie had to get to Longtail Village to rescue his brother, and fast. If he could fix the travel board, it'd show the quickest way. More than one use for a hammer, and its work on the frog skull seemed to be done.